Fox 22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, Maine State Police are investigating a hit-and-run incident that killed a woman from South Portland. Spokesperson Shannon Moss says 35-year-old Nicole Mokeme died in the incident that occurred sometime between Saturday night and early Sunday morning near the Skudik Education and Research Center in Winter Harbor. Moss says the state police believe this is an isolated incident and there is no ongoing threat to the public. They are asking for the public's help in locating a vehicle, though, that may have been involved. It's described as a 2016 black BMW X3 SUV. It has a main license plate with the number 5614WM and is registered to 35-year-old Raymond Lester of South Portland. Moss says the vehicle may have front-end or undercarriage damage. Now, if you see the vehicle, police say do not approach it. Anyone with information is asked to call the state police at 973-3700. You can see all of that information right there on your screen. One person is dead following a fire at a home in Callis on Sunday. According to Maine State Police, the fire marshal's office responded to the fire at a home at 118 Union Street. The deceased is believed to be the homeowner, 61-year-old Ellen Gibson, who lived alone at the residence. An autopsy is scheduled for Tuesday, and that investigation remains ongoing. The community is heartbroken as they mourn the loss of 40-year-old Truck Hewen. He drowned Saturday afternoon while fishing in the east outlet of Kennebec River Saturday. Megan Wilgus spoke to those who knew Hewen about how they would like him remembered. He was the epitome of what a true Mainer is. Friends and family of 40-year-old Truck Wynn described him as selfless. To him, it was all about helping his family and his community to helping complete strangers. He used to always have a shovel in the back of his truck in case somebody got stuck in the snow and he had touched everyone's life if you met him for one second. My neighbor who met him for five seconds was like texting me, I hope you're okay, I heard what happened. Right? Patrick like, cast in new truck for 10 years. On Sunday morning, he received the call, truck drowned while fishing in Kennebec River. I have a calendar invite to connect with him Friday morning that I haven't brought it, uh, I don't have my heart to quite delete yet. On his birthday, Kasten says Truck's gift to himself was giving to others, asking his friends to come volunteer with him at Preble Street in Portland. He would either uh, help set out meals, or in my case, I would man the dishwasher because they said I was the best dishwasher they had. Those who met Truck a handful of times were impacted by his presence. He was old school. He was like a prior generation living now. Someone who brought humanity to a time that too often screens, particularly during COVID, has brought folks apart. Uh, he was glue that was bringing people back together constantly. Even after his death, his presence carries on through others, inspired by his leadership. I now need to live more purposefully and make sure that my arms are always open to thinking about all different backgrounds and all different walks of life. Meanwhile, Augusta police are asking for the public's help locating a robbery suspect. According to a statement from the Augusta PD, just before 5 p.m. on Saturday, police received a call that the Big Apple store on Stone Street in Augusta had been robbed. The suspect ale allegedly entered the store and demanded an undisclosed amount of money. Police say the suspect left the area before they could arrive. That suspect is described as a white man around 5 foot 8, between 160 and 200 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt, black boots, camouflage hat, black backpack and light colored pants. The incident remains under investigation and anyone with information is asked to call 626-2370 extension 3418. Well, authorities are also investigating the discovery of two bodies found in Auburn Sunday morning. According to the Maine State Police, detectives from their major crimes unit responded to 4th Street in Auburn to assist the local police department following a report of two deaths. In a release, the state police emphasized that this, this is an ongoing investigation and said they will provide more details once the victims next of kin have been notified. They also stated there is no active threat to the public. Three people and two dogs abandoned ship at the mouth of Portsmouth Harbor on Saturday after their 70-foot yacht burst into flames. Three local boaters came to their rescue. Brad Rogers spoke to one of those rescuers today. So this is uh, my mighty vessel. This is the small boat part-time lobsterman Tom Hadley was in when he looked behind him and saw smoke coming from a yacht. 
and I thought, oh, they're having uh, engine trouble. I'll go back and I'll stand by in case they need some assistance. And as I headed back, the smoke got thicker, and as I approached the vessel, uh, it literally burst into flames. Hadley was afraid to get too close in case the burning boat exploded. His boat was also full of lobster traps. So I yelled to them to get in the water. They had pool noodles, of all things, to hold on to, and there were two dogs involved also. The Marine Patrol says Arthur and Diane Watson from Connecticut, pictured here, were on board with their dogs and a young man from Florida. I was a little concerned that they might panic and try to climb in the boat and overturn me, but they didn't. Hadley says he pulled Diane Watson onto his boat first, then the dogs, then Jared Tubbs from Jupiter, Florida. I had traps on board here. I had traps here but that I dumped over the side, uh, put the woman up in front, put the young man back here. The dogs were running back and forth, and the older gentleman was hanging on right here. With the water temperature in the mid-50s, Hadley says the ship's captain, 67-year-old Arthur Kit Watson, was starting to struggle in the water. I still had this older gentleman, a fairly large person, in the water. Uh, there was no way I was going to be able to haul him over the gunwale. Fortunately, standing by was uh, a couple guys in another boat. As the yacht continued to burn, he says the two young men pulled Mr. Watson out of the water and into their boat. After dropping all of them off at the dock, all three were checked out at a local hospital. Hadley says none of the three had life jackets, just the pool noodles. So wherever you can determine on your boat where you're going to abandon ship from, the life jackets should be nearby to that. The burning yacht ended up drifting into the current of the Piscataqua River and ended up sinking off the coast of Kittery. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. Starting today, the Community Connector Service wants input from the public for its proposed bus stop destination project, which begins later this year. As part of the project, bus service will change from flag stops to fixed stops. Those stops were selected based on popularity, infrastructure, and other factors. The goal of this switch is to improve the efficiency and reliability of service for riders, as well as the features that can be offered. A public meeting will be held at Bangor City Hall on June 29th at 5 p.m., where citizens can come in person or participate virtually to provide feedback. The company is also currently taking comments until July 20th, and you can either call 207-974-3111 or send them an email, and we'll have that information on our website, foxbangor.com. Well, as gas prices continue to rise, both independent truck drivers and larger trucking company owners have been forced to make tough decisions before accepting delivery jobs. R.A.J. Douglas spoke to locals in the trucking industry to learn what barriers they're facing on and off the road. Fewer truck drivers are coming through the local Dysars to gas up after diesel prices doubled, then tripled. Not as much profit, not as much uh, people just not as much business. We spoke with drivers who say that the truck driving industry has always been difficult for independent drivers, but now with repeated spikes in fuel costs, many business owners have had to close their doors. President of H.O. Bouchard, Inc. says inflation prices have made many companies reluctant to accept jobs. You're seeing a lot of local contractors um, hold off doing certain jobs because of the price of fuel. Um, and if there's a job they wanted to try to squeeze in this year, but they're short on people, they're not able to do that. Bruchard knows that he has had to make drastic changes to accommodate record high diesel prices. He says the company has had to raise customer rates, along with changing fuel procedures. Restricted some of the locations where our drivers can get fuel because of pricing. You know, bring idling down to a minimum. Um, you know, don't have the truck running unless it's absolutely necessary. Bouchard says fuel costs could potentially cause delays for consumers to get everyday goods. We deal with weekly here at our company um, supply chain issues. The American people rely on trucking to bring them groceries or toilet paper or whatever whatever it may be, water. Um, to think that trucks could be down for that amount of time. Both say they doubt gas prices could get any higher than they are right now. In Hamden, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. And those high prices certainly affecting everyone right now, um, you know, especially 
you know, the, everything is affected by those truckers and, and everything that they're carrying, too. Well, and gas prices, I mean, you, you know, they're going to affect anybody on the road. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting into the summer season. People want to take trips, right. have Get some fun more. adventures. And it's unfortunately uh, unfortunate that people may be having to decide between, you know, taking an extra drive mm. and having to save that money because gas prices are so expensive. So, yeah. you know, here's hoping some relief is in sight. You're right. Well, at least, uh, you know, if people are looking to maybe stay more local, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like some relatively nice weather on the way. Right, and here's hoping that continues for all of you outdoor enthusiasts. Let's take a first look at our forecast and find out. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Monday. Your first weather is brought to you by Kings Mountain RC. And okay, look at temperatures today. We did all right, right? Up near 70, below average. We're going to work on that, though. Warmer temperatures are on the way. In fact, there is an 80-degree day in our five-day forecast, but just not yet, right? Lots of uh, sunshine out there today, clear skies out there now, and that's a thing because we'll have cool temperatures tonight as cooler, drier Canadian air is now locked in place. We'll have lows tonight down near 40. Futurecast shows a few clouds increasing tomorrow morning. Other than that, though, we're dry. We should stay dry until later uh, Wednesday night into Thursday as we have rain showers back in the forecast on Thursday. Our forecast tonight, though, is mostly clear skies and a bit cool for this time of the year with low temperatures down near 40. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All righty, Jeff, thanks so much. An 80 degree, 80 degree day coming our way. Yeah, we can't wait for that. All right. Well, in the meantime, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Waterfront Concerts is preparing for the first show of the year at Maine Savings Amphitheater. And how the Lincoln Police Department is getting new equipment thanks to generous community members. One we'll of those stories and more after this. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. What could possibly be better than our annual tent sale? Wait a minute, I have a better idea. How about a no tent tent sale? He's right. Dorsey's has scoured their warehouses and suppliers for discontinued, slightly damaged, one-of-a-kind furniture and mattresses. You'll find great tent sale discounts of up to 50% off throughout our showroom. They save the cost of the tent, security, and weather damage and pass the savings on to you. Genius. It's simple. Less cost for us, more savings for you, my friend. What's your name? Leonard Skinner, Big Wheels Keep On Turning Tour. July 3rd, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine, with special guests Marshall Tucker Band and the Outlaws. Leonard Skinner, back on the road in 2022. On sale now. Buy tickets at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Part of the Barney Insurance Concert Series. Leonard Skinner, Big Wheels Keep On Turning Tour. Join us at Fairmont Market in Bangor for hand-tossed pizza, sandwiches, salads, and much more. Serving our community since 1925. Fairmont Market is proof that great customer service and delicious food stand the test of time. Open seven days a week. America's best bakers must discover what was baked in this kitchen. Touch, smell, and lick every single surface in there. It's a race to gather the clues and bake the mystery dessert. Did you make the right dessert? Crime Scene Kitchen, Tuesdays on Fox, and watch anytime on these platforms. The most talented home cooks return. There's someone from every season. This is MasterChef back to win. Don't miss all new episodes Wednesday, only on Fox. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. Hi, I'm Joe Cortez. Coming up on Good Morning Maine, it's the first day of summer, so hopefully the temperatures will start warming up. It'll feel less like fall out there. We'll have a look at your weekday forecast. Plus, the Maine International Film Festival will be coming back this summer. We'll be joined by a member of the organization for more details, and we'll have sports and more local news. The summer tourism season in Maine is off to a tough start for some businesses with staffing shortages again. As Mal Meyer explains, it means cutting back on hours or working long days just to keep up with demand. Or I can give you four gummy worms. It's a big problem for a small business owner. I definitely need more people. I just can't find anyone to work with me now. All Vivian Riven needs is one or two people, but no luck. Anything else for you guys? To avoid cutting store hours, 
She says she's doing everything from open to close. Seven days a week from morning until sometimes 11 o'clock at night. If it's busy on the streets, we'll stay past the hours that we're supposed to. Down the street, Palace Playland rides are sitting still. They now start up at 4 p.m. instead of around noon, like they did before the pandemic. We have a hard time getting people um, to apply. We have a hard time getting the people who do get in contact to set up um, interviews to show up for the interviews. They've tried $250 referral bonuses for employees with no limit on how many people they could refer. But still, they have about half the number of full and part-time staff they've had in years past. We are still hiring, and the more staff that we can pick up, the more we can start opening up during the daytime. While others are struggling to find workers, some business owners are feeling fortunate to be fully staffed. Go ahead and get the balsamic glaze. It's really a blessing. Brian Maxuga isn't sure what exactly the secret is, be it the atmosphere or something else. Like many in the industry, He's paying employees more. Not only to attract them, but to keep them. You know, valuable employees are one of those things that once you get them, you want to keep them. And that was Mal Maya reporting. Meanwhile, Waterfront Concerts continues to prepare for the first show of the year at Maine Savings Amphitheater. However, some Bangor residents question whether construction will be complete in time for Thursday night's performance. Concerts are back at the venue for a full season for the first time since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Waterfront Concerts spokesperson Alex Gray says construction for the 19-month project will pause Thursday night. Gray says guests can expect improvements to the venue when that project is complete, like expanded restrooms, upgraded seats, and concession stands. He assures those who've already purchased tickets the work inside the venue is in its final stages. The goal was really to get the heart of the venue complete and then put ourselves in a position to continue to work throughout the season. It was either that or take a season off. And, and the, you know, the business leaders in Bangor, the business owners in Bangor were very steadfast that that wasn't going to be ideal for them. So here we are. Those interested in attending Waterfront Concerts in Bangor this season can log on to waterfrontconcerts.com to view upcoming shows. Well, the christening of a Navy destroyer is highlighting the sacrifices of two generations. The ship's namesake killed in World War II and another Marine who died more than 60 years later. The future USS Bassalone bears the name of Marine Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, who was awarded the Medal of Honor for actions in Guadalcanal and later died on Iwo Jima. Breaking a bottle of sparkling wine on the ship's bow for good luck was one of the ship's sponsors who lost a brother in Iraq. The event took place Saturday at Navy shipbuilder Bath Ironworks in Maine. The town of Orono is looking to create a diversity, equity and inclusion committee to include more voices from the community they serve. Town council members say creating a diversity com committee will hopefully bring a group of people who may otherwise feel unheard by their council to feel comfortable and bring ideas or any issues to the table. Council member Sonia Berthesil says the committee will help the community feel better represented. Say um, there is a DEI committee that includes um, a representative who is a member at the Islamic Center and then if there's someone else who identifies as, as a Muslim they might have a a person they already know and can relate to who they might feel more comfortable. Right now, the board says there's no set deadline on creating that diversity, equity and inclusion committee. And coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, President Biden says a decision on a federal gas tax holiday and rebate cards for Americans could come by the end of the week. And a look at fentanyl-involved fatalities among adolescents aged 14 to 18 have skyrocketed year over year, attributing to 77% of adolescent deaths among teens last year. Now those stories and more in the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 comes back. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. The signs of spring are here. The sun's out for the evening commute. Whistles and clapping echo from the ball field. And the flowers bloom with warmer days on the horizon. 
Valley Home Services offers whole home comfort with the changing of the seasons. With the push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump, you're ready for whatever spring brings. Humid days or cool nights, come home to comfort with Valley Home Services. Home is our middle name. It is said that the eyes are the windows into the soul, which begs the question, can a window have a soul? At Renewal by Anderson, we think so. When it's a window forged from fibrous and over 100 years of refined craftsmanship, the essence of who we are transforms into a superior, stunningly beautiful window. So yes, a window can have a soul. For a limited time, take advantage of this great offer. Find out why we are the better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Attention Maine fishermen, we want to see your biggest catch and for you to win some great prizes. Go to foxbangor.com and click on contest and giveaway, then upload your photo for your chance to win. Sponsored by Willie Sports Center, Mill Mall, and elsewhere. We have everything for fishing from trout to tuna, fly fishing, trolling, and ocean rigging. We carry fat tire e bikes to get to remote spots and snow dog utility machines. We have all your hunting and outdoor essentials. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. So You Think You Can Dance is back, and you can watch anytime. The dance competition series that launched a thousand careers. That's what we're looking for. Is back with new talent. It's always been my dream to be on this show. Ow! New judges. You have a gift. And new inspiration. No matter what I do, I'm just going to dance. Are you ready? <laughs> so You Think You Can Dance, all new Wednesdays on Fox, or watch anytime on Fox Now or Hulu. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. If you've been injured in an accident, tell them you mean business. There is new reaction to the Biden administration floating the idea of a federal gas tax holiday. It's, of course, in response to skyrocketing fuel prices hitting Americans right in the pocketbook. Fox's Rich Edson has a closer look from Washington. Decades high inflation is hitting millions of Americans. Our biggest problem is our costs have doubled and they went up so fast and so quickly that our budget, we couldn't budget it in that fast. Biden administration officials say they're focused on slowing down growing prices. The president says he's considering a federal gas tax holiday, as well as rebate cards for drivers. He's also calling on oil companies to boost supply. What they've done is they cut back on the refining capacity. They have 9,000 leases, 9,000 leases on public land, and they should either use it or lose it. Bank of America says there's a 40 percent chance the U.S. tumbles into a recession next year. Top Biden officials say a recession is not a given. Inflation obviously is happening globally. A recession is not inevitable. The president really wants to have a steady and stable recovery. Economists are mixed whether the Federal Reserve will slow inflation without causing major economic harm. Last week, the Fed raised rates three quarters of a percentage point. Given that you went from virtually almost zero to now almost 2 percent in a very short period of time, that's, that's going to constrict the economy, uh, I think, very dramatically. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm will discuss rising gas prices when she meets with refining executives this week. In Washington, Rich Edson, Fox News. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack is holding its latest hearing on Tuesday. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington with details on what to expect. After focusing last week on what they labeled as Trump's pressure campaign on former Vice President Mike Pence, the January 6th committee is shifting gears Tuesday to lay out what they call a similar campaign on state officials. We have a president who, for whatever reason, refused to accept the results of a presidential election and then organized um, in a, in a hit against American democracy. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and his deputy Gabriel Sterling are expected to testify. Raffensperger gained recognition after the 2020 election when he rejected Trump's pressure to find more than 11,000 votes. We'll show courageous state officials who stood up uh, and said they wouldn't go along with this uh, plan to either call legislatures back into session 
or decertify the results. As the hearings continue, the committee is also keeping parts of its investigation vague, not ruling out, for example, the possibility of subpoenaing Pence. And as for whether Trump should be criminally charged, the panel is deferring to the Department of Justice, saying that's a decision for them to make. It's not the role of Congress to decide who gets prosecuted. Trump, for his part, slammed the hearings once again on Friday, calling them a theatrical production of partisan fiction. This is not a congressional investigation, this horrible situation that's wasting everyone's time. The committee is set to hold another hearing on Thursday where they're expected to focus on Trump's alleged push on the Department of Justice to influence the 2020 election. In Washington, Malta Rivera, Fox News. Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine sent many European nations scrambling to replace fuel imported from his country. Now, this means firing up some older facilities which no longer fit in with the current green agenda. Fox's Alex Hogan explains. European countries returning to coal to decrease dependence on Russian oil. Sunday, Germany announced it would restart coal-fired plants, but insists it's committed to a greener future. Independence from fossil energies and from Russian fossil energies must be pushed forward at full speed. The move to fire up German coal stations deeply contrasts the country's plan to cut the most polluting fossil fuel. At the same time, Italy and Austria announcing the possibility of coal as well. Russia's largest oil customer, the European Union, has vowed to stop buying from Moscow within six months. But there's no quick fix, and in the short term, customers bear the brunt of rising costs, including painful prices at the pump. While the average gallon of gas in the U.S. is roughly $5, in Germany it's $7.50 per gallon. In France it's up to $8 per gallon, and in Norway you'll pay roughly $10 per gallon. At a summit today of European leaders, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged continued pressure on the Kremlin. It will deprive the Russian government of massive resources that's used to help bankroll its attack on the independence of Ukraine. Meanwhile, other American leaders are calling on European nations not to forget or give up hope for a clean energy future. The energy security worry is driving a lot of the thoughts now about, oh, we need more drilling of gas, we need more drilling of this, we need to go back to coal. No, we don't. U.S. President Joe Biden underscored the importance of climate promises as well, saying we cannot afford to let these goals slip out of reach. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. The fentanyl crisis is affecting the lives of ordinary American families across the country. Fox's medical contributor, Dr. Mark Siegel, has more from New York. How does a vibrant, healthy, physically capable 17-year-old just no longer live? It's been more than a year since Chris and Laura Didier found their 17-year-old son slumped over his desk inside their home near Sacramento. Zach Didier died of fentanyl poisoning in December 2020 after taking what he thought was a single Percocet pill. Instead, it turned out to be fentanyl, a synthetic opioid up to 100 times more powerful than morphine. There was no Percocet at all in his system. A recent study by the Journal of the American Medical Association finds fentanyl-involved fatalities among adolescents ages 14 to 18 have skyrocketed every year since 2019. Zach, a straight-A student, athlete and musician, was said to be a first-time user who bought the drug on Snapchat. Fentanyl can be easily disguised as another drug. It is about poisoning, not overdose, that it's about the deception that's happening. Apps like Snapchat have faced heavy criticism by parents who say they are essentially an open market for the sale and purchase of drugs. Just two milligrams of fentanyl is enough to kill someone. That's 10 or 20 tiny crystals of salt. Laura and Chris turned their grief into activism. We've got to talk about the dangers that our kids are being exposed to. What if in our warning and in sharing our story, we can save some of these other kids? And we knew it's what Zach would want us to do. The DEA reports that Mexico's transnational criminal organization, which includes China, India, and social media, are producing increased quantities of fentanyl-laced counterfeit tablets. Shining a spotlight on these bogus pills is a big part of protecting our children. In New York, Dr. Mark Siegel, Fox News. 
And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, how a refurbished train car in Thorndike is turning into a must-see destination for book lovers. And in sports, a select few of main track runners competed in nationals over the weekend, including Orono's own Ruth White. We'll be right back. This is where legends are made. HRA Summit Nationals, Norwalk, Sunday at 3 Eastern on Fox. The 201 horsepower turbocharged Kia Forte GT. Finally, a reason to wear those aviator sunglasses you've had in the glove compartment all this time. Get 2.9% APR for up to 48 months on the purchase of a new 2022 Forte. Here at Versant, we want to help keep you safe near our power lines. Did you know that work or play near wires causes roughly 10% of all power outages? And that state and federal regulations restrict tree trimming up to 20 feet from energized lines? Be a good neighbor. If you've got work to do near the lines, give us a call here at Versant Power and we'll help you stay safe. Oh, love that Chevy Blazer. That's our next SUV. Love that Equinox. That's our next SUV. Nice Trailblazer. It was love at first sight. What? The Chevy family of SUVs. Find new options. Find new roads. Qualified lessees with a current eligible lease can sign and drive this Equinox for around $335 a month. Tax, title, license, and dealer fees are extra. Or well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing on all 2022 Equinox models when you purchase. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional, knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. We can go into a room and have absolutely nothing in there, nothing on the windows, no color, no character, no tone to a room. That's, I think, where we're strongest, is being able to help someone envision what's going to go in that window. And we leave, it's totally transformed into something that the customer wants it to be. We've often been told we make a room look better just by leaving it. <laughs> department has received new protective equipment thanks to generous community members. As Sierra Jordan reports, the community donated more than $31,000 for their local heroes. These standard old vests only protect police officers from handgun fire, but these new vests, just like the one I'm wearing, are made to stop a rifle bullet. And the best part is you can wear it for the entire shift. I sleep better at night knowing that they've got that protection. Chief J.D. Sparks was previously a sheriff's deputy in Fort Worth, Texas. After moving to Lincoln, Maine in March, he realized his officers needed better protection. Rifle usage is becoming more common uh, when it comes to assaults on officers. One of my first goals whenever I came here was to upgrade the equipment, get them the best uh, safety equipment possible. Shield 616 is a nationwide nonprofit organization providing rifle protection and gear for police officers and first responders. The gear includes a helmet, a vest equipped with rifle rated armor, and ballistic plates. With the help of Shield 616, the eight member police squad will now be protected from all kinds of gunfire. Well, I found it to be very comfortable. The vest I had before was a hand me down, and this was actually. Uh, measured to fit. It's not that bad once you actually get it on. When you're holding it in your hands, it, it feels a bit heavier, but once you actually have it on your shoulders and everything, it, it's not bad. Chief Sparks says the cost of the equipment totaled $31,800. Purchasing the new equipment would have been tough for the city to budget for. However, the Lincoln community was able to make it happen. I know that they have to be, you know, protected uh, while they're doing their job. We support them in all our 
policemen here. In Lincoln, I'm Sierra Jordan reporting for ABC 7 and Fox 22. Maine is producing more oysters than ever before. The increase is due to a growing number of shellfish farms that have launched off of Maine's coast in recent years. The state's haul of oysters grew by more than 50 percent last year to more than 6 million pounds. Maine's growing oyster business has made the state a bigger player in the national industry that grows the valuable shellfish. The growth has also raised questions from members of other marine industries about whether the oyster business is growing too fast. All right, well, shifting gears now, a refurbished train car in Thorndike is turning into a must-see destination for book lovers. That's because the owners have turned the previously unused boxcar into a small bookshop called Boxcar Books. Our Jody Hersey takes us there. I always dreamed of having a bookstore. Link Har Young's dream came true when he purchased this stationary boxcar from his neighbor in 2019 in the small town of Thorndike and turned it into boxcar books. My goal has been to create the kind of space that, that I would have fallen in love with when I was traveling. This bookshop on rails is a magical find for book lovers and train enthusiasts alike. We're in an old Swedish boxcar, um, only, only about 50 feet long, so it has to be a highly curated selection of books. You know, I can't have everything. Customers will find a small children's corner at one end of the shop, while each side of the former train car is filled floor to ceiling with an array of fiction, sci-fi, mythology, history, and nature books, as well as a few titles for those who enjoy DIY projects. Har Young says most books inside Boxcar Books are used, although he does purchase a few new titles from time to time. The, I mean, the best part of it is knowing when I have connected someone with a book that I think they'll have for the rest of their life, and it's going to be like a memory for them of where it came from. All thanks to a hardcover or paperback souvenir from a used boxcar with a brand new purpose. In Thorndike, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. And a final note that Boxcar Books is open weekends, April through December. So go check it out. Yeah, it uh, certainly sounds like a, a really cool destination. Yeah. Um, I mean, cozy in there, but uh, just also a place to just explore yeah. and, and delve into. Uh, you know, I, I, I almost like that they don't have a, a huge selection of right. books. So it kind of narrows down your choices for you. It's definitely very rustic and vintage mm -hmm. and definitely a little bit of mystique about it yeah. with the style of the boxcar and the style of the shop in general. So definitely something to check out for sure. Yeah, really, really cool stuff there. All right. Well, Jeff Weller is going to be coming back with our full five-day forecast. You won't want to miss that. High temperatures back up near 70 today. Tomorrow, same story, followed by a few changes are on the way. Those details for you when I come back in just a few minutes. Get ready for a good night's sleep. Buy a mattress or anything at Jordan's. And if the Sox sweep the World Championship, it'll all be free. And you still get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the fun at Jordan's. You don't have to worry about gas prices with a new Kia from Van Sickle. Choose from the affordable 2022 Kia Forte EPA at 39 miles per gallon or the Kia Nero Hybrid EPA rated at 53 mpg. The new all-wheel drive Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid EPA rated at 79 mpge. Or check out the stunning all-new all-wheel drive 2023 Kia Sportage and get the peace of mind that comes with Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. The best in the business. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. Hey, everyone, listen up. It's time to take back the summer. Quit fall. We got you. It's time to sing along. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> With your new summer playlist. Time to bring the heat. And dance. Into the summer night. Fox is all new. All summer long. What's the first thing you want to do when you take a bite of that? Take a second. Big wow. The big wow. Work hard, play hard with the ultimate work and play truck, the Toyota Tacoma Access Cab. Make this your ultimate summer with the ultimate deal during the Toyota Summer Sales Event because you can get 1.75% APR financing on the ultimate Tacoma that includes two years no-cost maintenance and Toyota Safety Sense. Tacoma, named best buy of the year among mid-size pickups. So work hard, play hard. But first, see your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. 
Imagine waking up on a free mattress. Well, if the socks sweep the world championship, anything you buy now will be free and get up to 60 months no interest. And Sunday. Here we go, your full weather is brought to you by Varney Chevrolet. Come see what the Varney value is all about. And we are talking about the longest day of the year is tomorrow, daylight-wise. Well, 14 hours, 15 hours and 40 minutes of it. Uh, and then we begin to lose daylight on Wednesday. We lose about three seconds uh, during the day on Wednesday. Out there right now, though, the wind is out of the north, ushering the cooler temperatures for us tonight. In fact, we'll have low temperatures down near 40, so... If you're sleeping in a tent tonight, that could be a thing uh, with those low temperatures down near 40. And then tomorrow morning, there could be some dense fog in there as well, as the air will actually go calm for several hours tonight. And that could lead to some dense fog, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, temperature-wise today, we did all right, right? Up near 70 here in Bangor, 65 for Millinocket, uh, 64 for Bar Harbor. 70s, though, were not too far away. Those will make a run for us tomorrow. It's not going to be a heat wave, but still, it's going to be better. To, this weekend was awful, right, with temperatures in the 40s and 50s, uh, 60s today, and probably a few mostly 70s across our area tomorrow. In fact, it's going to be a very nice day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine through the afternoon with high temperatures in the low 70s. All right, today, though, pretty nice day, right? At least we brought some sunshine back into the forecast and also uh, temperatures in the 60s. The big low pressure, that's what's left of it right here. And this thing, I know, it ruined your weekend, right? With those rain showers out there and cold temperatures, that now is pulling out of here. See you never again. And we have nice weather on the way for tomorrow and also for Wednesday. But there is some stuff going on over here, and that's going to be in our backyards beginning on Thursday, most likely increasing clouds on Wednesday into Wednesday night, and then a few rain showers probably after midnight Wednesday night. Let's walk you through it. So tonight, no problems at all. Tomorrow, no issues at all. Here we are tomorrow evening, nothing going on. And then the clouds will begin to increase tomorrow night, later into Wednesday morning, and there's going to be a, a front out here. It's going to be just close enough to maybe bring us a few light rain showers after midnight on Wednesday, and then general rain showers getting in here on Thursday. And the rainfall, once it gets here on Thursday, it could be a soaker again. We're talking a quarter to a half inch of rainfall is on the way for Thursday afternoon. Our forecast though for tonight though is lots of clear skies, some dense fog out there, low temperatures down near 42. That is a bit cool for this time of the year and a calm wind after midnight for tomorrow. It's Tuesday, lots of sunshine tomorrow. That's going to feel nice. Highs near 73 with a north breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast by Varney Chevrolet shows tomorrow. All right, 73, lots of sunshine. Same story for Wednesday. Thursday, we got some rain showers on the way, a bit cooler near 71. And here comes the weekend. This weekend looks a lot better. Friday, 74. For Saturday, 81 under partly cloudy skies. Beth? So definitely a very different picture shaping up mm. for this coming weekend as opposed to what we had this past weekend for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very dreary versus yeah. very bright and sunny. Bright like and sunny that. and hot. Yes. All righty. Well, sports is coming up next with Dave Peck. Stay with us. Find meaningful work in behavioral health care. As a younger person, I find that the most rewarding part of my job is the emotional gratification in seeing my clients succeed. Learn more about compassionate careers at caringforme.org. Spectrum presents Stream Home Makeover with JoJo. We transform the Joneses' home, upgrading their entertainment experience with the best TV and internet services from Spectrum. Let's go. With Spectrum TV, you get your favorite channels and streaming apps, plus tons of on-demand. Switch to Spectrum TV and Internet for only $49.99 a month each with no contract. Call 1-844-480-4713. Ready for more? Take a look. <laughs> with the free Spectrum TV app, you can stream live sports, news, and more on all your devices, inside, outside, and on the go. Wow, that's awesome. There's more. We powered up the game room with Spectrum Internet, which gives you the fast, reliable speeds you need to power all your devices. And it comes with free security suite, so you can feel completely safe and secure. Switch to Spectrum TV and Internet for only $49.99 a month each with free modem. Call 1-844-480-4713. Give your home a Spectrum Stream home makeover. Call now. Thinking twice about that summer road trip due to high gas prices? Well, with an electrified Toyota, you can pack your bags today. Right now, you can get savings on amazingly fuel-efficient Toyotas at the Toyota Summer Sales Event. 
Save fuel with an electrified all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid with 40 MPG and up to a 580-mile driving range. Plus, get 1.75 financing on most RAV4 models. So take that summer road trip. But first, see your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Find meaningful work in direct care, no matter where you are in life. The difference that you make in somebody else's life is absolutely incredible. Visit caringforme.org to learn more and make an impact through a compassionate career. Sign up for You Pick 'em Red Sox at foxbangor.com. Pick who you think is going to win and compete against other fans for prizes. Welcome back, everyone. While softball and baseball state champions were being crowned, several main track runners spent the weekend at the New Balance Outdoor Nationals, including Orono's Ruth White. Now, White shipped down to Philadelphia to compete at Nationals, held at University of Pennsylvania, and as the only Red Riot in attendance, she more than held her own. In the 3,200-meter race, White won her heat with a time of 10 minutes and 40 seconds, and had she done that in the state, it would have been a record. There's a lot of other really good runners out there, and I think we're in a small state, and it's easy to see the other times and, um, like, know how we stack up, but it's different to actually be in the same race as them. So I thought it was fun to be in a packed race with um, a bunch of other kids and learn how to navigate that. Level of competition was one of the biggest takeaways from the weekend for her, and she's already one of the best runners in the state. And while helping Orno win is always a priority, measuring herself beyond just Maine has certainly become a motivator. I see the times, and I know that nationally I'm not highly ranked, but it's a big eye opener to actually be there. Um, so I think just continuing to focus and work hard, knowing that there's a lot of kids out there, I can try and chase their time. I mean, that's a great mindset to have, right? Congratulations to White and the rest of the main runners who participated down in Philadelphia this past weekend. So the spring season is in the books. A couple weeks to catch your breath. Then it'll be on to football and the rest of the fall sports before you know it. And if you're looking to get involved, now might be your chance. The Maine Association of Football Officials Bangor Chapter is once again in need of referees for the upcoming season. The certification course is free to anyone interested and consists of 10 classes held at the Cohen School in Bangor beginning on August 11th. It's five classes in the classroom and five classes on the field, so hands-on. Um, I focus strongly on the actual job of officiating knowing your zones, knowing how to work with your teammates, your other officials on the field, how to communicate with them. Those who pass the test this fall will be eligible to ref games after week six of the high school season, likely starting at the youth level. Now, ref shortages aren't new to this year, but Campbell said this season he wants to focus on the positives that come with the job. Game doesn't go by, doesn't matter the sport, I do multiple sports where somebody doesn't, as I'm going off the field, thank me for it and appreciate, hey, great job. Get, get, getting into the parking lot, I hear the positive comments. And I'll, to be honest with you, more and I'm hearing that more and more. That's good to hear. Sometimes refs go underappreciated, so it's good to see that people are reaching out and uh, giving them a little bit of praise because certainly they deserve it. We'll have more information on foxbangor.com as to how you can sign up for those classes. For now, let's turn to some golf. The U.S. Open finished up on Sunday, but up in Maine, the second annual Live and Work in Maine Open begins this Thursday at Falmouth Country Club. Florida State University star and Camden native Cole Anderson is back in Maine and ready to tee it up. Cole, along with Topsom's Caleb Manuel, have been granted sponsor exemptions and are excited to join the field of 156 on Thursday. And we asked Cole early about the challenges that Falmouth brings and about competing against some of the world's top golfers. Anytime you get to go against tougher competition, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to not only compete, but to, you know, learn from some of these guys. Uh, you know, there are guys here that have been on the PGA Tour and, you know, know what that takes. And there are guys here that are, you know, trying to get there now. Um, so just a great opportunity all around for me.
and we'll have more coverage of that event starting on Thursday. Now, from one main prospect to another, Nokomis' Cooper Flagg continues his quest to represent his country on the court. Flagg was named one of 18 finalists for Team USA's U-17 national team roster after competing out in Colorado Springs for the past few days. He was among just two other Class of 2025 players named finalists for Team USA. And out of the 18 total finalists, just 12 will compete in the 2022 FIBA U-17 World Cup in Spain starting in early July. So best of luck to Cooper there as he continues to look for that spot and hopefully he will be playing overseas in just a matter of weeks. Now finally, let's close things out down at Fenway. Maybe you're just starting to pay attention now that Celtics are over. If so, that's okay. You're not a bandwagoner, I promise, but I will say, it is pretty good timing on your end. Sox looking to move six games above 500. Maybe you've been there from the beginning. Taking on the Tigers here, tied at one. Jaron Duran sends it to deep right field. That's a ground rule double, so he's in scoring position. And that starts off a rally. The youngster gets on base, and it's Rafi Devers who does a job of his own. Scoops one to basically the same spot in right. That one does not go over the fence, but it does allow Duran to score from second. Sox go up 2-1. Then in the fourth, Christian Vasquez with the sharp liner to left. Sacrifice fly makes it a 3-1 to one game, and that was enough. Josh Winkowski gets the win. Tanner Houck, the save. The Sox take it 5-2, to two, the final. All right, we'll be right back after the break. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia, movement that inspires. The signs of spring are here. The sun's out for the evening commute. Whistles and clapping echo from the ball field. And the flowers bloom with warmer days on the horizon. Valley Home Services offers whole home comfort with the changing of the seasons. With a push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump, you're ready for whatever spring brings. Humid days or cool nights, come home to comfort with Valley Home Services. Home is our middle name. When pipes froze and water damage ravaged a home, Bouchard Cleaning was there to restore and dry things up. When a home in Wells needed mold remediation, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration performed as promised. From Madawaska to Owl's Head, Ashland, to Bath. We've answered the call. More than just a cleaning company, we're restoring Maine. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical Services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. How Maine is that? Mechanical Services, we're everywhere you are in Maine. We know your mornings can be busy and hectic in your home. We're here with the local information you need, fastened to the point so you can be on your way. Keeping you prepared for whatever your day might bring. All while having a little fun, too. Start your mornings with us on Good Morning Maine. Delicious twist on your favorite comfort foods. Decadent desserts you can whip up in no time. And game-changing shortcuts. What's for dinner is about to get way easier. So get ready to get dishing. Weekdays at 1 on Fox 22. Make more good in the all-new Sportage X-Pro. Kia. Movement that inspires. This is Sheldon Cooper's theory of relativity. Ah! Young Sheldon, five times a week on Fox 22. DVD, digital, and music releases this week include an action comedy, a sci-fi drama, country superstars, and more. Here's Fox's, Fox's Ashley Devorkin with a list of new releases.
It's grotesque. I'll give you 20,000 for it. The action comedy, the unbearable weight of massive talent, tops the list of what's new in home entertainment. The film stars Nicolas Cage playing a fictionalized version of himself who takes a big payday to attend the birthday party of a dangerous superfan in Spain. But things take an unexpected turn when he's recruited by the CIA to help bring down his biggest fan. Do you want him back? Of course I do. Colin Farrell and Jodie Turner-Smith star in the sci-fi drama After Yang. They play a couple who explore the meaning of life after their daughter's beloved AI helper malfunctions. That's gold. In the survival thriller Gold, Zac Efron plays a man determined to protect himself and a massive gold nugget he finds in the desert. It's crime time, baby. A crew of outlaw animals try to move on from their criminal ways in the animated adventure comedy The Bad Guys. Do you want to go to that ball? The live-action musical Cinderella is a modern take on the classic fairy tale and features Camila Cabello playing the iconic princess. This doesn't make any sense. Six strangers who wake up in a remote cornfield find themselves being stalked by an evil presence in the horror thriller Escape the Field. Available from the small screen, season two of Netflix's superhero TV series, The Umbrella Academy. I'd have a Friday night crowd in the palm of my hand. New music includes releases from country superstars Luke Combs with his album Growing Up and Jimmy Allen's third album, Tulip Drive. Who wants to be one step ahead? Musician Jack Johnson drops his first album in five years, Meet the Moonlight. And R&B star Giveon will celebrate his debut album, Give or Take, with the launch of his North American headline tour in August. It's just unbelievable. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. And a great day coming up for all you foodies out there. Tuesday is National Smoothie Day. Smoothie outlets are offering deals to lure in customers for the special occasion. Jamba Juice reward members can receive any medium smoothie for four bucks. Smoothie King has a BOGO deal going, and Pinkberry is offering one dollar off any size smoothie when you order online with the code, you guessed it, smoothie. Well, also happening on Tuesday, the kickoff of summer. And if you're planning to cook out this summer, You'll be paying a lot more. A cookout with burgers, hot dogs, chicken, and all the fixings will cost you around 17% more than a year ago. The New York Post compiled the list, and based on increases in the Consumer Price Index, estimates that you'll pay 76 bucks and 94 cents for the average cookout. Last year, the price of a cookout actually declined from the year before. The same package of hot dogs that cost 3.82 a year ago now averaging five bucks and 22 cents. Ice cream also up 14 percent in just a year. Supermarket guru Phil Lemper says the biggest price increases he's seeing are for beef, pork, chicken, eggs, and milk. He says you can find more affordable prices for frozen meat and seafood and cheeses in the prepackaged dairy case. And on a completely different and joyful note, the Corgi Convention returned to, to a California beach. It's doggy heaven, you might say. Hundreds of corgis hit the beach in San Francisco Saturday. The iconic and adorable dogs waddled through the sand for races, costume contests, group photos, and of course, mingling amongst their friends. The event, which has taken place every year since 2014, was put on hold for three years due to the coronavirus pandemic. I'm willing to bet that was a welcome sight on that beach. I bet so. All right, well, that's all we got for tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in. Good night, everybody. Put a little more cash in your bag.